Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome back to the Armory. It's been gone a little while, so I'm finally getting around to bringing this back, and looking at weapons from across the Halo universe that will be analysed here in detail. And in this episode, we're looking at probably one of the more exotic or foreign weapons of the Halo universe that's been with us a long time, but has only really been accessible and wieldable since around the mid-years of the franchise. It's one of the most instantly recognisable weapons of the Halo universe, and one that's been requested many, many times. So in this episode, we look at the Sentinel Beam. Roll the intro. The Sentinel Beam is a Fauna directed energy weapon used primarily by Aggressor Sentinels. The characteristic sustained beam was originally thought of to be more of a tool than a weapon, however in spite of this mistaken characteristic, is exceptionally well suited at stripping energy shields, rendering armour plating molten, and burning and flash cauterizing biological material even bordering into flash vaporization. It is for this reason that the weapon has been demonstrated being particularly effective against small flood outbreaks. Although typically integrated into the structure of an aggressor sentinel, it can be used as a handheld weapon if scavenged from a destroyed machine. There are various types of sentinel beams generally employed on different classes of sentinels, but they all function on more or less the same premise. The sentinel beam measures 36.7 centimetres or 25.1 inches in length, and the sentinel beam was manufactured and developed at the Ferrarius Assemblavats, where all minor and major works of the foreigners were constructed. The weapon is the primary armament of the aggressor sentinel, foreigner automaton drones with a limited ancillary intelligence. The weapon itself can be found within its curved undercarriage of the main body of the drone, directly beneath the central head. Strictly speaking, the Sentinel Beam is known as an Offensive Sterilization Beam, as it was designed to effectively destroy flood biomatter, and thus is intended for use against minor flood outbreaks. Their powerful beam weapons and defensive energy shields make them very effective in combat against intruders or foreign objects that present themselves as threats. Although the weapon is integrated into an aggressor's structure, a limited internal power supply allows it to function independently of the Sentinel, should it be destroyed. There are some variations in the weapon's overall appearance, with major permutations of the weapon being either a metallic chrome chassis, punctuated by blue glowing internal workings, or a gold metallic chassis, sporting golden internal lighting. In both cases, the weapon is evidently not designed to be held manually in practically any configuration, belying its true function as an attached equipment unit to the aggressor sentinel's carapace. That being said, the weapon can still be held and wielded manually if a little clumsily, with portions of its mounting assembly acting as the grip, and sections of its housing serving as unintentional foregrips. The internal workings are still being investigated by Oni XEG to fully understand the methods behind its operation. What is currently known is that the weapon contains a power cell that holds stored energy that can be recharged by siphoning energy from a Fauna recharge station. The barrel of the weapon is obvious by the particle lensing, electrostatic inductors and gravimetric impellers that show clearly through the housing, but otherwise lacks any of the expected features of a normal weapon, such as fixed sights, grips, safeties, and attachment rails. This is, after all, technically a piece of machinery that has fallen away or been forcibly detached from its intended carrier. Targeting, then, is really only achieved by eyeballing the vector, the beam of the weapon providing a very clear path of trajectory, so it can be expected that the wielders will often fire and miss pulling the weapon onto the target thereafter, using the beam itself as something approximating laser targeting. The major exception to this being the Mjolnir HUD BIOS, which identifies the weapon and projects an estimated targeting reticle onto the Spartan's HUD that is approximately tied to the weapon's aiming vector, having been ascertained by the suit sensor arrays and optics. Even with this being an estimation, it is still strikingly accurate. 
the Sentinel beam fires a superheated negatively charged ion particle beam at temperatures over 3,500 Kelvin. Gravimetric, electrostatic and magnetic field focuses and directs the particles to strike a target. The kinetic energy is transformed into thermal energy at or near the surface of the material. The resulted heating causes the material to melt and then evaporate. The sentinel beam should, by rights, be invisible in a vacuum, and only be visible when fired in atmosphere due to its interaction with other particles within the medium. With the colour of the beam differentiating different energy states, with the warm orange beams being of lower power and temperature, and the bright blue beams being much higher energy and thus significantly hotter. This interaction between the beam and particles within the medium limits its operational range, as each interaction would create an opposing charged particle that would neutralize the negatively charged beam over time. Meaning the further from the target the beam is fired, the less powerful the beam is, and thus the less damage it transfers. That being said, in the law it is stated that it has an almost unlimited range, and although this technically goes against the laws of physics, we can consider it as being almost unlimited range, given that most targets fired upon tend to be biological or organic in composition, and the water within the cells boils at around 100 degrees C. Even at the theoretical maximum range, the beam would still be devastating to unarmoured or unshielded biological targets. Even at extreme range, the energy the beam would carry would still be more than enough to boil the water within the cells of the target, and since generally speaking most targets fired upon are within a few dozen metres from the sentinel or wielder, and the beam itself travels at the speed of light, it is very unlikely that the desired target would have any amount of time to actually dodge the beam, save for a clean miss of the wielder due to the lack of targeting optics. In either case, the beam is immensely damaging to biological targets, and can cut through armour and shields with extreme proficiency. The sentinel beam has a few variations. The gold aggressor sentinel beam, which is a sentinel beam utilised by sentinel eliminators from Delta Halo, and fires a stronger blue beam with a higher energy output. This grants it significantly more damage, and as previously covered, an increased effective range, albeit with a faster draining of the charge. The Safeguard Sentinel Beam, which is a sterilization beam of Safeguard Sentinels, which are highly efficient at containing and cauterizing intrusions into their assigned protectorate. Beam projectors stolen from these foreigner constructs are still extremely effective, but do suffer from overheating and a limited internal power supply. Arcane Sentinel Beams, which are white painted with a charge cell that's been decreased from 250 to 80 but has greatly increased damage. This variant was the preferred weapon, as used by Thav Sebarim during the battle for Zeta Halo. It has since fallen into UNSC hands and is being actively researched. Onyx Sentinels had a unique Sentinel Beam that were golden in colour, with temperatures as high as 15,000 Kelvin. While it takes longer to charge before a shot, the Onyx Sentinels were capable of merging into composite arrangements where their weapons' properties were multiplied and enhanced to a point where dozens of cooperating Onyx Sentinels could fire an immense gold beam capable of destroying fully shielded Covenant cruisers. Continuous contact from the Sentinel beam can be devastating, even for armoured opponents, and its ability to drain energy shields makes it an effective weapon against the aggressor Sentinels themselves. The beam is powerful enough to strip away the shields and very rapidly heat the armour beneath, to a molten state. Sustained fire can burn a hole through the armour altogether and penetrate the target within, where the immense heat of the beam causes flash vaporisation of the bodily fluids, which ultimately leads to blast injuries, causing the targeted body part to explode due to the build-up of hot gases, causing immense physiological damage. It is for exactly this reason it is so effective against the flood. The weapon can temporarily overheat if more than 20% of the battery is used up in one continuous shot, and the weapon tends to vent this excess heat in an attempt to counter this. It possesses a 
relatively decent damage rate, amazing accuracy at range, and sustained attacks with the weapon will inflict large amounts of damage to almost any target. The Sentinel Beam is a weapon that is first and foremost relatively rare to come across, as in order to get one, one must first destroy a Fauna Sentinel, which is no mean feat for the average Marine. After this, the wreckage must be sifted through in the hopes that the beam itself survived intact, and then removed from the Sentinel's carapace. The beam will have a limited battery power and opportunities to recharge the device are few and far between, whilst the standard variants of the Sentinel beam has a larger battery capacity owing to its lower power output, the Golden Sentinel Beam is much more powerful, however it overheats more quickly and its charge depletes significantly faster. In either case, these are not weapons that can be easily reloaded and thus fall into a category of weapons of opportunity, useful in a pinch should the soldier come across one and very powerful for the short duration it holds a charge, but ultimately more or less utterly useless thereafter, unless one comes across a 4 and a hard light weapon recharge station, which again, is a rarity. Overall, the Sentinel Beam is a devastatingly powerful and effective weapon. Its rarity and difficulty to acquire makes it a weapon of opportunity, but if the opportunity presents, it is more than worth the trade-off. Its muzzle velocity of basically light speed, alongside its extreme effective range, and its proficiency at stripping energy shields, cutting through armour, and boiling off biological targets into their constituent molecules, makes it a weapon that has to be picked up if opportunity presents, and it's almost a foregone conclusion that whoever does pick it up will enjoy it immensely. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider smashing the like button and leave a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. Big shout out to my patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet Bear, Mikhail, Sophia, and Ashley, my dutiful monitors. Darian, Scarab, Spartan0137, Anthony, Ghost, Aaron, Chris, Jacob, Sean, Element0, Somatic, Jordan J3, Dan, Mr. Keys, Directal, Gunslinger, Jacob, Bandmill, Echo, Evermore, Officer Cat, and Personal Devil, my diligent sub-monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers and all the other patrons who have jumped aboard to support the channel, it means more to me than I can accurately put into words. Another shout out to my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob, Schmitty, Talia, Fenrir and Born Stella, and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Shout out to John for, I don't fucking know. And if you want more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos, and consider jumping aboard yourself as a patron or YouTube member to keep the channel alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching, Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.